BTEC Applied Science Unit 2 and this video is about Assignment C which is Chromatography. So what is chromatography? Uh, you probably did in year 7 or year 9 or even at primary school got a piece of paper uh, and maybe put some plant pigment on it or even uh, used a pen an ink pen and drew a, a dot then you put it in some water or another liquid and the water soaks up the paper and it carries the ink or the different colors with it and it separates them because the different components of the mixture uh, are soaked up at different rates they travel up the paper at different rates and so they are separated and you can use this to identify them. In other words, if you're given a mixture, you can figure out what the components of the mixture are using chromatography, okay? Chromatography is a method for separating mixtures of usually colored components. As the solvent moves up the paper, it carries the mixture with it. Uh, different components of the mixture move at different rates. In your introduction, <clears throat> in your introduction, I suggest if you Google uses of chromatography and mention a few practical uses, there are hundreds of them. Uh, chromatography is used to separate small amounts of mixtures uh, and in medicine and in industry for basically identifying the components of a mixture. There's hundreds of different uses of chromatography. Two techniques that you will use. Paper chromatography uh, uses a special, very uniform absorbent paper if you want good results, uh, and thin layer chromatography. And that uses usually a, a piece of plastic which has like a silica gel uh, over one side of it. And then the, the stuff gets soaked up the silica gel. That's called thin layer chromatography. Here are some terms which you need to know. The stationary phase. This is what the mixture is supported on, for example, paper. Uh, the mobile phase uh, is the liquid which flows through the stationary phase. OK, uh, the chromatogram is the piece of paper or the plate that you end up with. Uh, and the solvent is the liquid that you use for the mobile phase. Uh, I'll talk about the different types of solvent that you might use a bit later. Uh, very important, something that you're gonna have to work out once you've got your chromatograms is something called the RF value for each component. Uh, the solvent front is how far up the the solvent travels if you leave it running for a few minutes for example how far up the solvent rises in that time from the baseline the baseline you draw with a pencil you draw the baseline with a pencil and then you put your mixture on the baseline then each component will rise up by a certain amount for example, on this diagram, the solvent has gone up 10 centimeters, a particular component has gone up seven centimeters, and the RF value is the distance traveled by the component divided by the distance traveled by the solvent. So in this case, seven divided by 10, 0 0.7, that's the RF value. You can actually, for different chemicals, look up the RF value uh, you, you should be given a table of different RF values, actually. You have to produce three chromatograms, two paper ones and one TLC, thin layer chromatography one. The paper chromatography ones, you are going to do amino acids and extracted plant pigments. And then the TLC one will just be extracted plant pigments. For that, we bash the hell out of some spinach uh, using a solvent. We get the green stuff out of spinach. 
and we do our chromatograms using that. For the amino acids one, uh, I give my students four separate amino acids, uh, call them A, B, C, D, uh, and a mixture which contains three of them. And then their job is to find out which of the three amino acids uh, are contained in the mixture. OK, now the solvents, I suppose you shouldn't worry too much at this stage, but there are um, special solvents. Uh, you can read that at your leisure. Um, the paper ones and the TLC ones take different amounts of time. Uh, another big difference between them is that with the amino acid one, you need to develop it so that you can actually see something. And so after the experiment, the slides, the slides need to be treated with something called ninhydrin to make it visible. Uh, this may take several hours, uh, so a technician will probably develop them for you. It should be done in a fume cupboard as well because ninhydrins uh, a pretty nasty chemical. So I usually get a technician to do that bit. OK, so what do you have to do? You carry out the three experiments carefully and safely. Um, your teacher will actually observe you as you do this to make sure that you're doing it independently, proficiently and safely. And they will have a little checklist which they will include in your assignment. Uh, if you're not happy with the results, you, you should repeat it, try and get better results. You should calculate your RF value for different components. You should draw conclusions based on your results. Uh, for example, identifying the amino acids, identifying perhaps what different pigments are in uh, the stuff that you got from the spinach. Uh, discuss the factors that affect the separation and relate these to your results. Now, I'm not gonna tell you what they are because as with my students, research it, do a bit of Googling, uh, put this in your report with some references. Factors that affect the separation of the components. Yes, have a good half a page list of them and explain them yeah, and relate them to your results. Suggest and justify improvements to your experiments. Discuss how chromatography works and compare the two different methods, which is better, advantages, disadvantages. Uh, these are the very brief things which it says on the assignment brief. Of course, it gives you very little information about what you actually have to do in the specification. And again, your teacher should give you this. This is exactly what you need to do for pass and merit and distinction. It's not exactly a checklist, but you just basically make sure you do everything on there. If there's any bits missing, then it could cost you a, a, a pass or a merit or a distinction. OK. Actual details of the experiments. I'm not going to waffle on for ages and ages about them because there are some very good videos out there already and I'll put these links in the comments below uh, and I suggest you have a, a look at these videos. I think the first one's uh, good fun as well. So good luck with that.